Hello everyone. Today we'll be learning about neutralization reactions. Neutralization reactions is a reaction between an acid and a base. So for example, hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. And what they do is they nullify the reactants in other words. So that means a base and an acid would react to nullify the reactants. And it's called a neutralization reaction. In a neutralization reaction, there's a transfer of protons. So protons are hydrogen ions and they're transferred between the acid and the base. Therefore, when an acid reacts with either metal hydroxide, metal oxide, carbonate or hydrogen carbonate, one species would gain an electron, a proton, while the other loses a proton. So there's a transfer of protons. In an acid-base reaction, in other words, a neutralization reaction, the conventional acid and bases would simplifyly react like this. So an acid and a base would produce a salt and water. We'll take an example. We have nitric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. When they react, they form sodium nitrate and water. So, are hydrogen ions from the nitric acid, hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide would produce the water that's in the reaction. So this is a basic and most common reaction that's happening in a neutralization reaction. So in every neutralization reaction, the hydrogen ions from the acid, the hydronium ions from the base would give you water. Now all neutralization reactions are exothermic, meaning they would liberate heat as a product. So the molar heat of combustion is going to be negative. Here we have hydrogen ions re reacting with hydronium ions and it forms water and heat as a product. So they release heat in the reaction. The heat released has the same value for all reactions between strong acids and strong bases because the value ranges between 57 and 58 for a reaction such as this where the hydrogen ions reacting with the hydroxide ions giving us water it's always minus 57 kilojoules per mole and that's our molar heat of combustion measuring the heat of reaction to measure the heat of reaction, you'll be using a calorimeter. And this is something you would set up at school. You would have a thermometer, a styrofoam cover, styrofoam cup, and also a stirrer. Now why you use styrofoam is to prevent the errors due to heat loss. And this is an insulator, so it would prevent heat from dissipating into the environment. Unlike using a beaker where heat is lost readily. Now acid and metal hydroxide, we have the acid reacting with the metal hydroxide and it produces a salt and water. And the salt, it depends on the acid and the metal hydroxide you'll be using, the composition of the salt. Taking an example, we have hydrochloric acid reacting with ba barium hydroxide. When those two react, they form barium chloride and water. Now the hydrogen ions from the hydrochloric acid, because barium, barium hydroxide is also aqueous, the hydroxide ions from the barium hydroxide would give you the water. Now there are also insoluble metal hydroxides. That means metal hydroxides that are solids. We have hydrochloric acid reacting with magnesium hydroxide. When they react, it forms magnesium chloride and water. Now we're going to get the hydrogen ions from the uh, hydrochloric acid because it's in solution. But our magnesium hydroxide is not in solution. So we don't have any ions being produced. It's just this. But our magnesium chloride here, it's, also, it's in solution. So it's going to form magnesium ions and water. Now note that all the chlorides are taken out because we're going to have an equal amount of chlorides in each side. 
Now when acids react with metal oxides, also a salt and water is produced. But again, the salt is dependent upon the acid and the metal oxide you'll be using. Let's take an example. Here we have nitric acid reacting with copper oxide. Now copper oxide is a solid and they would form copper nitrate. Copper nitrate is aqueous and water. So we're going to have our hydrogen ions from the nitrate, nitric acid. Again, copper oxide, because it's a solid, it's not going to ionize. But our copper nitrate is aqueous, so it's going to ionize to form copper ions and water. And this is our ionic equation. Acids react with carbonates to form carbon dioxide. So acid plus carbonate would give you carbon dioxide, water, and a salt. Taking an example, we have sulfuric acid. When sulfuric acids react with sodium carbonate, it forms carbon dioxide gas, water, and sodium sulfate. The sodium sulfate is an aqueous solution, and so is our sulfuric acid, but our sodium carbonate is a solid. So our sodium carbonate won't ionize. That means we're going to have hydrogen ions from the sulfuric acid, but nothing is going to ionize from our sodium carbonate. Carbon dioxide and water are going to be the same. But here we have our sodium ions from our sodium sulfate because sodium sulfate is a solution, so it's going to ionize. And this is our ionic equation. Again, you can see that the sulfates are cancelled out. What happens when an acid would react with a hydrogen carbonate? Now, a hydrogen carbonate is HCO3 with a minus on the top. A carbonate is CO3 with two minus at the top. So you can see when it gains a hydrogen, it's losing its minus value. Now when an acid reacts with hydrogen carbonate, it forms carbon dioxide, water and a salt. So taking an example, we have nitric acid with potassium hydrogen carbonate and both of them are aqueous, forming carbon dioxide gas, water and potassium nitrate. Now potassium nitrate is also in aqueous solution. So we are going to have our ions produced. We're going to have hydrogen ions from the hydro nitric acid. We're going to have hydrogen carbonate ions from the potassium carbonate. And we're not going to have any ions here because all the rest are going to cancel out. And therefore, it's just producing carbon dioxide gas and water. And this is our ionic equation for acids with hydrogen carbonates. Now, a strong acid and a strong base. Nitric acid is a strong acid, reacting with sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. What happens is we have nitric acid, sodium hydroxide, forming water and a salt. Our salt is sodium nitrate. This is a neutralization reaction, so we're going to have heat liberated. Complete dissociation. As nitric acid and sodium hydroxide are completely dissociated, into ions in aqueous solution, the reaction is better represented as this because we're going to have the hydrogen ions from the nitric acid, the hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide, giving us water and heat. And this is a basic equation. Now, spectator ions. Remember the sulfates and the chlorides we cancelled out earlier when we were writing ionic equations? Well, these are known as spectator ions because they take no part in the reaction, that is the proton transfer reaction because they don't get any protons transferred between them. And also they remain in solution because they don't take part in the proton transfer reaction, they always remain in solution. Because of this, they're known as the spectator ions. In the reaction between sodium hydroxide and nitric acid, sodium and nitrate ions are the spectator ions. A weak acid and a weak base, a strong base. We have ethanoic acid, which is a weak acid, reacting with sodium hydroxide again, which is a strong base. 
So we have the hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide, but because ethanoic acid is a weak acid, it doesn't completely ionize, so the whole acid molecule would react. Because the whole acid molecule is going to react, it's going to form an acetate ion along with water. The resulting solution is therefore one which contains sodium, ethanoate and ions, that is sodium ethanoate solution. Because it's going to have this ion here and the sodium ions from the sodium hydroxide, it's going to be sodium ethanoate or sodium acetate. Now a strong acid and a weak base. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, a weak base would be ammonia. What happens there is ammonia reacting with the hydrogen ions from the hydrochloric acid, which has fully ionized. But again, ammonia, it cannot completely dissociate because it's a weak base, giving us ammonium ions. The final solution is an ammonium chloride solution containing ammonium and chloride ions. Now, ammonium ions are from this reaction. Chloride ions are from our hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid reacts reacting with sodium carbonate. Now this is an acid and a carbonate reacting. So that would produce the carbonate reacting with the hydrogen ions to produce the um, acid which is carbonic acid here. So all of them are aqueous solutions. Metallic oxides with acids. Reactions between metallic oxides and an acid are called a neutralization reaction as well. Why? We have copper 2 oxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. So if we look at the chemical equation, we have copper oxide reacting with the hydrogen ions from the hydrochloric acid because it's completely dissociating to form copper, copper ions and water. So because water is produced in the process, it's a neutralization reaction. So just recapping on what we did, we learned about neutralization reactions. So neutralization reactions are reactions when an acid reacts with a base to produce a salt and water. So the base could either be a metal hydroxide, a metal oxide, a metal carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate. Let's look at some questions. We have question 16 which, sa which says, state the methods of determining the equi equivalence point of a neutralization reaction. So it just says state. So you have to identify. So you would go an acid base indicator, such as methyl orange, a pH meter, and a conductivity meter. So these are all three methods you can use to determine the equivalence point. Question 17 is a multiple choice question. It says, all neutralization reactions are A, endothermic, are they endothermic? Because neutralization reactions, they liberate heat, so they do not take in heat because endothermic reactions, they take in heat, while exothermic reactions, they liberate heat. Because neutralizations don't take in heat, it's not A. Is it C, which is may either be endothermic or exothermic? It has to be a clear answer. So it has to be either endothermic or exothermic. Can't be e both of them. So C is incorrect. Reversible. It's not in equilibrium, so they are not reversible reactions. So D is incorrect. B, exothermic. Because they produce heat as a product, B is the correct answer. So B would be your answer for question 17. The question 18. Identify the general equation for a neutralization reaction. Here we have again four different options. Option A, we have hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide giving us sodium chloride and water. Now this is the neutralization of a hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So this is not the general equation, it is the um, equa equation for hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Therefore this is incorrect. C, I mean B, sorry. We have hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. They're not written correctly. If you were to write them as an ionic equation, you would actually write a plus here and also cross out your um, 
chloride ions, which are your spectator ions. So this is an incorrect formula and also an incorrect equation. It's written incorrectly. So B is incorrect. So if you have an incorrect answer in your multiple choice questions, always eliminate it because it cannot be that. Option D, we have water dissociating to form hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. This is the dissociation wa of water. So this is not the general equation for a neutralization reaction. Now C is hydronium ions plus hydroxide ions giving us water. Remember in an acid base reaction, we have acid plus uh, base giving us water and salt. Now this is where it's coming from. The acid gives us the hy hydronium ions. The base gives us the hydroxide ions. That way it's forming water. So C is the correct answer. Question 19. Write an equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide solution and hydrochloric acid. So just simply write an equation. So your answer will be sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid, giving you a salt and water. Our salt is sodium chloride in this case, and water. Balance it and also write your states down. You know bases and acids are usually aqueous solutions, and our salt here is aqueous again. So water is a liquid, that's how you would write a balanced equation. Question 20, write an equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and solid sodium carbonate. So this is a carbonate and an acid. So what are the products? Carbon dioxide, water and a salt. We have hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium carbonate, giving us sodium chloride which is a salt carbon dioxide and water. Again, always balance your equation. As you can see, it's all balanced. And write your states down. So liquid gas and aqueous solutions for HCl and NaCl. But sodium carbonate, it's already given as a solid, so you just put an S on it. Now that brings us to the end of the lesson. We learned about neutralization and how acids with metal hydroxides, metal oxides, carbonates and hydrogen carbonates are acid-base reactions.